Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I having that this is the year 2018 being the first video uh the first message of the Lord God Almighty to a, be, to be aired on this channel. I want to give this prophetic message the message and the revelation that I was given by our Lord Jesus Christ during the year 2017 December 26 when we are go we were we are we were going to the new year the message to the 2018 seasons and uh, continue and to continue that year I want to pray in the name of Jesus as I begin this video I want to pray let us pray in Jesus name mighty father jehovah god holy one of israel the lord of lord you who is holy you who is righteous the god of heaven and earth i praise your holy name i glorify your name i say thank you for your holy thank you for your righteous thank you for your gracious i welcome you in this name in this place in the, in the name of jesus christ i pray that you may bless the message you may speak through my tongue let the revelation the wisdom the uh, and the and the knowledge of the holy spirit flow in jesus name bless the viewer the listeners o oh god and let them understand your will in the name of our lord jesus christ the lord god almighty i do pray and believe amen amen hallelujah praise the lord jesus christ well i want to give this message having by this is the message of the lord jesus christ the message and the title is uh, the matured church the matured church in my vision the vision of uh, 26 december the date 26 december 2017 the lord took me in the spirit and uh, i saw in the spirit i saw something that was not a uh, the, the thing that i i i i, I was not expecting and uh, i saw a big ocean like an ocean an ocean like a big ocean and uh, in that ocean i saw many fishers the fishers the fishers those fishers those who fish the fish those who harvest the fish fish i saw them there were many many people there were many many servants who were fishing out and they were gathering the harvest they were gathering the fish they, if it was now a time of the harvest and they were harvesting the fish that were in those ocean in those sea and so as i was watching watching in my vision i heard a voice saying now it is time to harvest and it is time to harvest the fish and so i saw those uh, fisher fishermen they were fishing out they were harvesting harvesting they were gathering they gathered all the fish that were in those ocean in those sea then the same voice said now after they have they had gathered after they have harvested the fish that were in those ocean i had an a voice saying that now i want only those fish that are matured return those fish that are not matured because i want only those who are mature matured those who are fully fully, fully grown those who are not uh, uh, i don't want the, the young fish the young fish in, in form of maturity they are young so i saw those fishermen then they returned all the fish that was small and and matured and they remained with all those fish that had been matured and the fish that have was grown so i saw that now those fishermen they were now fishing the fish that are fully matured the fish the fish that are fully grown up and that is when my vision ended and i had in my vision i was imparted the message of god through the message of the revelation 
that that indeed it is the harvest time that we are indeed entering a time of the harvest a time of god that god is harvesting his fish and his fish means the church of god and the fishermen that i saw they are the workers of god or even the angels of god that have been commanded go now and fish all the fish that are matured go now and gather the harvest of the fish that are matured and i saw other she other fish that were not matured they were rejected they were rejected and they were left behind because they were not matured what would be god say what would be god saying in this hour what is god saying in this message in this revelation that indeed jesus christ is coming and the time of harvest is near when our lord jesus christ is coming to mature is coming to take the chart that is matured and he is coming to pick to take only the church that is fully matured in righteousness and in holiness otherwise the other churches that are not matured god will spew them the word of god says in the book of revelation 3:15 that see because you are not uh, 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 cold because you are not cold or, or, or cold or warm you are lukewarm he say that now you, uh, because you are not cold or or hot it, the bible says that because you are not cold or hot and because you are now lukewarm i will come i will spew out of my mouth and so the church that i saw is the church that was lukewarm is the church that was not matured the church that was still in the world the church that was still in the church but still in the world the church that was still a baby church and that is the message of god saying that the rapture of the church of god is near the coming of our lord jesus christ is near and the harvest the great harvest end time the greatest harvest is near he is coming to mature the church that is holy he is coming to take to rapture the church that is holy the church that has been matured by the wisdom and by the knowledge of the word of god and see what god is asking is the church of god ready because i have seen jesus christ coming and i have seen the great harvest the gathering the gathering of the of the church that is matured but the church is not matured they are still in baby christian the fish that i saw they represent the christian that are not matured the baby christian in faith god is saying that it is now time now to mature because jesus christ is coming for a matured bride jesus christ is coming for a matured bride a church that is holy a church that is righteous a church that has attained his righteousness and that is the church that i saw jesus christ coming for so god is asking are you ready the church of god are you ready for the coming of our lord jesus christ are you matured you see that the church that jesus christ is saying is a church that much is matured is a church that knows how to walk with god and so the question the big question is is the church ready the church is not ready because i saw many church and many fish who who were left behind who were who, who had been corrected by but 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 the voice said return those unmatured fish return those more baby children those children those baby 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 in faith return them because jesus is coming for a bride who is matured a church that is matured a church that is holy a church that is perfect that is the church that god jesus christ is coming for and so that is the harvesting that i saw the harvesting of jesus christ the harvesting of god correcting the church that is in mature and coming to rapture the church that is matured even so when you see that this is the hour that we are in, we are entering the season of the harvest know that even the devil is now doing his own harvest even the devil. so jesus christ is coming for that for the church that is matured the church 
of God, we are in the time that Jesus Christ is coming. And the time of harvest, when the devil knows that we are in the time of the harvest, and so the devil is also harvesting his soul. That is why you see the wickedness is increasing, the homosexuality, the lesbianism, the witchcraft, and the worshipping of the enemy. Because the devil is also harvesting, he is also having a revival, his revival is also being increased. Because the time of harvest is, uh, is near, the time to harvest between the children of God and the children of darkness, the time of harvest is near. So the devil is also bringing a revival, a revival of falsehood, a revival of false gospel, a revival of signs and miracle without God, a revival without holiness, a revival without righteousness, a revival without the glory of God, a revival of deception, a revival of apostasy, a revival teaching them, but they are being taught the doctrines of the devil. A revival that is being now that revival is collecting all and gathering uh, ch churches and uniting them church in unity, in unity of the devil. But it's not the unity of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the unity of the Holy Spirit. It's not the unity of the Word of God. But the unity of the devil, the church of God. Be aware, because the time of harvest is near, and Jesus Christ is saying that the harvest is near. And so God is gathering his children, the matured church. And the devil will also be gathering his people and forming them in those revivals. Those revivals without righteousness. Those revivals of false prophets and apostles. Those revivals that you see, that ever the revival of the gospel of prosperity, the gospel of this world. God is saying that the time of revival is now. The revival, when you shall hear the revival is breaking, but the revival, the revival without the power of God, the revival without Holy Spirit, the revival of deception, the revival of demonic teachings, the revival of false prophets. But at, at the same time, there will be the revival of holiness, the revival of righteousness, the revival of the children of God, true children of God. The time of harvest is near, but Jesus is coming to harvest only those who are matured, only those who have reaped the things of the world aside. Why? Because God is saying the church should be ready by now. But when he look at the church of God, he sees that there is still babiness in the church. The way the church is behaving, they are behaving like children, like, 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 like converts who were born yesterday. Like a, a, a believer who was born yesterday in faith, an unmatured believer, a baby Christian in faith. That is how the church of God is behaving. Behaving in adultery, behaving in, uh, in, in sexual sin, behaving and being caught in sexual sin. How can even pastors are being caught in sexual sin, being caught in the love of money, being caught in adultery? The church that God is coming for, is coming for a mature church, not a church that is behaving like a baby Christian, the church that is behaving and still worrying in the sin, still worrying in mud of the sin and the worldly things. That kind of church is not matured. And that is the kind of church that I saw God saying that now I return all those fish that are not matured because I need those who are matured, those who are perfect, those who are grown in faith, grown by righteousness, grown in holiness, grown by the power of God. That is the church that I saw Jesus Christ coming for. The rapture of the church of God is near. It is time to mature now, to come out from that level of the baby Christian, to come out from now that level of sucking milk, to come out from that level that of sinful, that level of parenting in that level, in that anointing of the level of the world, anointing that is corrupted, anointing that is sinful. That level, you must now mature because Jesus Christ is coming for a matured church that is holy, a matured church that walks with God in righteousness and holiness of him. That is the kind of church that I saw Jesus Christ coming for. Those who are matured, those who are perfect, those who have, re who have divorced the things of this world, who have separated from the things of this world. But Jesus is not coming to marry a girl, a baby girl. Jesus is coming to marry a woman who is an adult, who is matured, who is perfect. Because Jesus is also perfect. And so, the kind of the church that you see still uh, walking in sin 
is a church like is a baby, a baby girl, a church that is still walking in sin, a, 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 a girl that is not matured, a girl that is not holy, a church, a girl that cannot even marry. Jesus is not coming to marry that kind of a, that kind of a, of a girl that is not uh, matured. Even a girl that does not know even how to cook, even how to wash the clothes, even how to dress, even how to speak, even how to serve the husband. A girl that does not have understanding, a girl that is still having the foolishness of a baby. That cannot marry Jesus. And that is how the church is, like those girls that are unmatured. But Jesus is saying he is coming for a church that is an adult church, a church that is a virgin church that is an adult, a woman who know how to dress, who know how to cook, who know how to speak, who know how to serve her husband, Jesus Christ. That is the kind of the church that Jesus is saying. And that is the kind of church that Jesus is harvesting in this hour. But the rest of the churches are matured. They will be left behind in the great tribulation. I saw them having in form of a fish. Small fish, a matured fish. Now I don't want this mature and matured fish. Them, they will be left behind. They will be left in the world. Jesus Christ is coming. This is why God is saying and calling for that church that is holy, calling for that church that is righteous, calling for that church that is perfect, calling for that church that know how to walk with God, not still walking in the things of sin, not still walking in the things of lying, fornication, pride, all those kind of things, the love of the money in the church. The worshipping of our ministers, the worshipping, uh, the fight in the pulpit because of the offering and tithes. That is not the kind of church that God is coming for. God is coming for a church that really seek him. A church that is fully mature, the perfect church with the love of Christ. A church that is mature in holiness and righteousness. That is the church that he is coming for. Because Jesus is holy and he wants us to be holy like he is holy also. I want to give the word of God and I now I want to give what God is coming for because Jesus Christ is not coming for a prostitute church. Jesus Christ is not coming for a baby church. Jesus Christ is not coming for a worldly bride. Jesus Christ is coming for a church that is matured, a bride that is brameless, a church that is holy, a church that knows how to walk with God. Why? Because God is saying that it is the time now to mature, to mature and to come out from the babyness, to come out from, the, from, from, from that level of the babyness, to come out from that level of, of the world and to be, start walking with our Lord Jesus Christ in grace, in strength, in power, in holiness, in righteousness, in his likeness. And I want to read the Bible, the word of God. In the book of Ephesians 4.13, as we go to the qualities of a matured church, as we go to the qualities of the matured church, I want to give the qualities of the matured church, the qualities, the, the characteristic of a church that is matured, of a Christian that is matured, the church that I saw going to heaven, being raptured and being harvested by our Lord Jesus Christ. But not this kind of a church that is still dressing like the world, that is still worshipping like the world, still worshipping like the pagan. The church has become like now it is now a pub, like discos and all the entertainment in the church. That is not the church of God. That is not the church of God. That is not the church of God. That is the revival of the devil. The church that God is coming for is a church that is far separated from the worldliness of the things of this world. In the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, let me read in the book of Ephesians and see what God is saying in this hour because we are in a, such a time that God is calling out for a church that is holy because the harvest of the time, the harvest of the, the age of the harvest is now. Now we are not in the time of the, of the, of, 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 of the church ages. Now we are in the time of the kingdom of God, the age of the kingdom of God, the age of our Lord Jesus Christ coming now. The church ages now is past. Now it is the grace of God that the churches may be all be corrected, may be all gathered and be harvested. That is the hour that we are. I am reading in the book of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, you see what God is saying. 
that quality, the matured church that God is saying by the word of God, the matured that church that God is saying by the truth. See, I am reading in the book of uh, the book of Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 11, the Bible says this. It was he, the Bible says this, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be uh, some to be pastors and teachers. Hallelujah. To prepare God's people for the work of the service and to prepare God's people for the work of the service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Hallelujah. See. Until we all, we all reach in the unity of the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. See, that it is He who, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave some to be apostles, some to be pastors, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists and teachers. It is the one, it is God who gave those things, those gifts, and He gave them for this reason. To mature, to prepare God's people for the work of the service. He gave you to be a prophet. He gave you to be a prophet, to be a pastor, to be a teacher, a pastor. He gave, he called you to be a servant, to prepare people of God, to prepare God's people for the work of the service. See, to prepare them to mature, not to entertain them with the grace gospel of the world. He said, then, so that the body of Christ may be built up. He gave those gifts so that we may be built up. The body of Christ may be built up. Why? Because the body of Christ is in babyish. It's not building up. It's not growing. It's in a dormant state. A dormant state means the body of Christ is not going forward but going uh, backward. The the, the, the the dormant church. The dormant church means they don't fruit. They don't produce the fruits now. They don't produce. They don't shine anymore. They don't pray anymore. They are dying. They are lukewarm. They are lukewarm. They are, uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are sleeping. It is a church that is dead. It is a church that is sleeping. That is why God is saying He gave those gifts so that the body of Christ may be built, may be built in Him, built in righteousness, built in holiness. And He said that until we all reach in unity, in faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, that. He gave up so that we may all reach to the unity in the faith. Reaching in the unity of the faith. The faith of righteousness. The faith of holiness. The faith of, uh, of brimless. The faith of the word of God. That is why in maturity, he said, he said that until we may all, ha uh, and because uh, of the Son of God, in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature. You see, and become matured, meaning the church is not mature. That is why he sent those gifts, those five offices of apostles, uh, pro uh, prophets, teachers, uh, pastors, and uh and those kind of evangelists, so that the church of God may be matured, see, attaining to the maturity of our Lord Jesus Christ, attaining for the whole me to the whole measure of the fullness of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. That means there is a measure that Jesus Christ is measuring the church of God that want to can enter the kingdom of God. There is a measurement that God has, has kept there. There is a, a measurement, there is a standard for those who will want to, for those who will enter the kingdom of God. There is a measurement that when you want to enter the kingdom of God, there is a standard, a standard of holiness for you to uh, to be complete, for you to come into that level of maturity, for you to come to that level of righteousness. That is the mature church that God is saying that he gave some to be prophet, he gave some to be apostles, he gave the gospel of God, he gave the, he sent the servants to mature the church of God so that they may mature, so that they may come out to that level that Jesus Christ is saying. And that is why I saw Jesus Christ. That is why I saw God. He was saying that he is coming, he is harvesting for those who are holy, those who are maturity, those who are in that standard of the level of holiness, of maturity. Them that are still now walking in righteousness and holiness. Them that a church that has a difference between the world and, uh, uh, and the church. A church that has a difference between the world and the church. A church that is holy, a church that is brimless. Not this kind of the church that you see that even the homosexuality are still preaching even the gays even the adultery are uh, the magicians there the uh, entrepreneurship in the church are uh, the business and uh, uh, the comedians the entertainment not that kind of a church that is a church that is not matured those things should not be found in the church of god that is why 
God is calling for a church that is matured, a church that knows how to walk with God, a church that knows how to dress, a church that has attained the level of maturity, the level of holiness, the level of perfectness, because the kingdom of God is near. That is why God is saying, he is not coming for a baby Christian. He is not coming for a baby Christian. A baby Christian means that you are in that level of, uh, of lukewarm, that level of uh, you have just accepted the, the, the Lord. Now you are in that level. You don't have even the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You don't walk with, with the gear, with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm not speaking about the gift. The fruit themselves, because gift cannot make you to enter the kingdom of God. But what will make you to enter, it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. See, that is the kind of the church that God is saying. He's not coming for a, a worldly bride church. He is coming for a word, a word bride church, a church, a bride that is made by the by the word of God, not a church that is made by the worldly, worldly things, worldly programs, worldly fashions, worldly things, entertainment, and all those kind of nonsense. Jesus is coming for a mature church that walks in Him, with Him in righteousness and in holiness, and that is why He said that Jesus is coming. And it's not coming for that foolish church. We must be mature. This is the hour that God is calling the church of God to mature and to come to that level of maturity, that level of righteousness, that level of Him, so that we may be able to see the kingdom of God. Why am I speaking this? Or why is God speaking this to us today? See, this is ho this is ho is because in the book of First Corinthians chapter 14, First Corinthians chapter 14, the Bible says this. First Corinthians chapter 14, I'm reading. And uh, we, I, I want us to read in the book of First Corinthians, chapter fourteen. We hear what God is saying. Well, I am reading First Corinthians chapter fourteen. There are twenty. The Bible says this. The Bible says this. Brothers, stop thinking like children in regard to the to the evil. Be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. Hallelujah! You see that brothers stop thinking like children. That is what God is saying. That a church that is still thinking like children. Still thinking like the world, that is not the church of God. A church that is still preaching the things of the children, the thing of the world, the world is, the world is gospel, that is not the church. God is, the, the, the power was saying, brother, stop thinking like children in regard to evil, be infants. See, in regard to the things of sin, be infants, and infants that does not know how even to sin, be infants. And he said, but in regard of your thinking, be adults. See, but in regard of your thinking, be adults, be adults, be matured. That is the church that God is calling for, a church that is matured. And now I want to give this, uh, these qualities of matured church. Starting with the, this, so that you may understand. Because the hour that we are, our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. And his time is almost near, almost finished. The time is almost finished. The end time signs that we see, the, 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 the decays on the, in the church, the falling of many in, the, in Christianity today, the lack of righteousness, the lack of holiness, but still claiming that they are serving God. That is a form of a sign of end time. The backsliding of the church of God. The deception, the false prophet. They are matured church. That is signs of the end time. So the God, Jesus Christ is coming and the time of harvest is near. I have seen the raptured church and that is the church that I want to speak about today. A church that is matured, a church that knows God and fear God. So I want to give the qualities of the matured church. The qualities of the matured church and I want us to read in the book of Ephesians 5.26. That is where those qualities are, the quality of a matured church, so that you may know if you are really lady, so that the church of God may know the pastors there, that you may know if you are lady, if the church of if the, if the church that you are, are reading, they are ready, are the sheep that you have you have been given by God, are they ready to see the kingdom of God? Are they ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Or are they the sheep that I saw? Uh, being rejected and uh, I, I heard that now return those sheep, return those fish because they are not matured. Are they kind of the church that God is rejecting? Uh, well, in the, book of, or in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 5 uh, verse 26, the Bible says this. Uh, I want to, to start 25 so that you may understand. 
Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Hallelujah. He, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. 26. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Hallelujah. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but a holy and a brimless hallelujah see that that is the church that god is speaking so the qualities of the matured church that god is speaking of is this church that jesus is that god is saying here that to that to make her holy a church that is 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 made holy and cleansed by the washing water through the word of god that the holiness that they have comes from the word of God. Does not come from their doctrines. Come from the word of God. And it says. And to present herself, her, himself as a radiant church. Without stain to, to a, or a wrinkle or any other premise. A church that is pure without stain. A church that is radiant. Without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, But holy and brimless. Hallelujah. That is the kind of the church that Jesus Christ is saying. A church that is made brimless. A church that without sin. A church that is holy. A church that is radiant. A church that is glorious. That is the church that Jesus Christ is saying. That is the church that the prophets, that the apostles, that the teachers that the, uh, and, 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 and the pastors were, were commanded to, to, to produce that kind of a bride, a bride that is holy, a bride that is righteous, a bride that have those quality of righteousness, brimless to the things of the world, and, and, and pure, a virgin church. That's the kind of a church that I saw God is saying, the raptured church. That is the church that is called the raptured church, a church that is radiant, a church that is glorious, a church that when that church is walking even at seat there, they walk, they pass with the presence of God, with the power of God, the glory of God works with them. That kind of a church. A church that has a difference between the world and between the church. That is the church that God is saying, a matured church. So I want to give the qualities, the qualities of a matured church. Number one, holiness in and out. The, that church must be holy in and out. Meaning that church must be holy in and out. The way they dress, it must be holy. Not dressing like the world. Still dressing the tight clothes. Still dressing the seductive clothes. Still dressing the, the clothes that are so immoral. The sexual garments. The garments that are, are, are with the rust. The, that, the garment that the Bible calls those garments. The garments that are stained with the rust. Stained with the seduction. Women dressing those clothes. Men dressing those clothes that are um, tight. Are so sexy. Are so seductive. Seductive. The, the dressing that are so kidding. That kind of a church. God is saying he is coming for a church that is holy. In and out. The way they dress. Now about inside. It is the way. The, the your heart is meaning the body must be holy the spirit must be holy in your heart you must be away from every kind of lying every kind of pride every kind of a uh, slandering every kind of a uh, of unforgiving every kind of a uh, envy and the things like that the rusting of the eyes the all oh, the pride the selfishness all those kind of things you must be away that is the church that he's saying a holy church in and out that is a church that I see, a matured church, a church that will be raptured by Jesus Christ. Number two, the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, and you see that one about the holiness, number one about the holiness, the holy church, is we are us, we, we, we all, or all of them, we are getting them through the word of God. And you know in the book of First Peter, first one, the Bible says well there, that uh, the Bible says well that, be holy because your God is holy. And the Bible says that everything you do, let it be holy. Everything you do, whether in deed or in word, let it be holy. In everything you do, do it in holiness. That is what why God says that he's coming for a church that is holy in and out. The way they walk, the way they preach, the way they speak, it must be holy. The way they dress, it must be holy. A church that is in and out, holiness and righteousness. That is why the Bible says that to present her a bride that a bride that is holy, holy and stainless, holy and brimless church.
That is the kind of the church. Number two, the image of Christ. See, the image of Christ. Jesus is coming for a church that has now uh, 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 showed or a church that has now presented the image of Christ. See, why is he, 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 is he speaking like this? Because a church of God is called Christian, are called Christian because they are Christ-like. Meaning that when you see a Christian going there, when you look at that Christian, you will see Jesus. That is the kind of a Christian. That is the kind of a church that God is saying. That a church that has, has, has a reflection of Jesus Christ. That when you look that church in the mirror, in the mirror, when you look at the mirror, what do you, what do you see? You see yourself. So, meaning that when the world look at you, you who is the church, they see Jesus. They see the quality of Jesus. They see the humbleness. They see the humility. They see the character. They see the walking. They see the thinking. They see the speaking. They see how even you see like Jesus. That is the church that has the image of Jesus Christ. Until you, 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 you be in the image of Christ, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming for a bride right, that look like her. A, a, that look like him. A bride that look like him. The way they walk. The way he walk, they walk the, the, the way they, they think, the way they speak, the way they see. Beginning to how he walk, do, not walking like the world, but walking like Jesus. How Jesus Christ was walking in that humbleness, in that holiness, in that separation from sin, in that separation from the worldly things, in that separation from the things and the corruption of the things of the world. Gee, you must walk like him. Until you walk like Jesus, you are not walking with, with God. And God says, a church that is in the image of Christ, that think like Christ, not thinking like the world people, but you are thinking like Jesus. When you, even your judgment, your judgment is like of Jesus Christ. Your judgment is of the word of God. Not a looking like the world. That when you see something, the way you are judging, the way you are consulting that thing, the way, the way, you, the way you are dealing with thing, you are dealing with thing in a childish thing, in a childly way, in a worldly way. You must have the thinking of Christ in you, the matured thinking, the thinking of holiness, the thinking of righteousness, the thinking of wrath, the thinking of holiness. The thinking, you must think like Christ, not thinking the things of the world. The things of the, of the world, like the, 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 all the people, are, the, the, world, the people of the world are thinking, you are still thinking like them. You must be, even you are different, even your thinking must, very, must be very uh, 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 different with the world. To think like Jesus Christ. The way you do things, you must do them like Jesus Christ. You must do them like Jesus Christ. Or like how those saints that were, are the power and those saints others, how they were doing. They were doing, they were doing like Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said that, follow me. So you must follow Jesus. Even your thinking, follow Jesus. How you see, follow Jesus. How you, you speak, speak like Jesus. Not speaking things that are not glorifying him. But you must sing like Jesus Christ. Judging like Jesus Christ and speaking like him. That is the image of God that God is saying. That a church that is like Jesus Christ. The church that is in the image of him. Image of holiness. Image of maturity. Image of the word. Image of righteousness. That is the kind of church that God is coming for. And he say, and he say here, that number three, a brimless life, a brimless life, the quality of the matured church, it is a brimless church, a brimless life. Your life must be brimless. Why? Because you see, even in the book of five, in the book of uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 26, it, it, it says where, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing water through the word, and to present her to himself a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or with a, without any blemish. See, without any blemish, you must be a church that is brainless, brainless life. That when you are walking, you should not be brained by the world. That when you, somebody live with you, but he leave you, uh, but he leave a, a phone to you. Or he, he forget his phone. He forget his own porch there. You, are, you can steal it. You, st you are still stealing. You are not faithful. You must be brimless in this world. Because in the time of judgment, Jesus Christ, when he will be coming for his people, those people who will still be brimming, will be with brim, with the world, 
those will not make it to the kingdom of God. Because you will not go because the devil will blame you. You abused me. You stole for me. Uh, you are not faithful. You did this. You disobeyed. You abused. You insulted this one. You must be blameless. A blameless church. The way you deal with things. The way you conduct your business. Come out from corruption. Come out from the things like that. Come out from adultery. Come out from fornication. Come out from the things of the world. The sexual sin. The pornography. Those things, the program, come from them because you will be you 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 will be blamed when Jesus Christ comes. He will say, the devil will stand and accuse you, saying you are an immoral. You used to watch those immoral programs. You used to do this and this. You used to you to rust at the women there. You used to do adultery. You used to fornicate. You used to have the love of the money. You used to do this. You stole the money of this one, this one. You 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 are you are co you are coverting the church that that church will not make it to the kingdom of God. That is a church that is stained, a church that has brims, brims with the world, brims that when you ask the church, when you ask the world, who are you? They say, that, that guy, I know that guy. I, you, know, you, you, know, you know that guy as a pastor, but we know that guy as a thief, as a robber. That, that man is a robber. And then you ask another, uh, the world about that lady. The world will tell you, that lady, that lady cheated. She, she was cheating her husband. She, she was fornicating. She was adultery. She, was, she did this and this. You know that lady, that lady she, did this, she aborted. But you see her, she's a worshiper in the church. She still praises God. Which kind of a church is that? That, a church that is still brain, with the brains of the world. God wants us to live a brainless life, but that, but that kind of a woman, that kind of a man is not brainless. He's not living in a brainless life. He's still being brained by the world. He's still being brained by, uh, with robberies, being brained uh, with killing, being brained uh, uh, with adultery, being brained with stealing, being brained with rusting and all those kind of the things. That is not the church that Jesus Christ is coming for. Jesus is saying that he's coming for a church that is brainless. You must be brainless, my dear brother. You must be brainless, my dear sister. Be brainless everywhere you are. Even if you're speaking, whatever you are speaking right now, speak and speak that you are brainless. That what you are speaking will not condemn you, will not judge you. Because some of the, the things that you speak together, you speak the things that, you, that, that that person cannot want to hear. The things that are not pleasing to God. The things of abusing, the things of abusing, the things of uh, accusations, lying, the things that are not true, the, 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 the dirty talks, the dirty things. What are these? The, this is why God is saying, He is coming for a brainless. You must be brainless. You are speaking, your eyes, you are walking, you are, you are, you are, even your clothes, you must be brainless. Not walking with clothes that are showing your body parts that, that when you are going to the street, everyone is looking at you. Those men that are not saved, they are rusting at you. You see, so they are going to hell and they will blame you because, no, I, 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 fought, I fell in hell and I fell in, in sexual sin because of that Christian who seduced me. Her clothes were very tight and, uh, and she, you will have brain. The people of the world will have brain on you. They will blame you because you, you, you made it. You made it. You cause it for them to enter hell. You cause it for them to, to rust. You cause it for them to go astray. You are stumbling. You are blaming. You, 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 are, not, you, you, you are blamed by them, by those who are dying. You are blamed by it is you who made us uh, uh, like this. You must be blameless in this life. The way you teach your pastors, the way you teach, the way you preach, be brimless that they will not bring you. That in the time of judgment, in the time of the rapture, in the time of the harvest, you will not miss the kingdom of God because of those brims. You must be, st you must be without stain. Stain of the brims of the world. Spots of sin. Spot like of those. Those things, when you have those spots of sin, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be spotless in this hour. Be spotless with the things of the world. Be spotless the way you walk. Be spotless even if you are with your clothing. You are modest. How you dress. Be spotless. Not dressing to kill. Not dressing to, to, to like the world. Like uh, you are killing somebody. Like you are in a fashion. Dress to please God. To honor God. To be brainless in this hour. 
because we have that we have many things that are blocking people to enter the kingdom of God starting the way they dress starting the way they look starting the way they speak they become blocks it becomes wars to prevent others to see the kingdom of God you see higher number 4 holy spirit filled Number four, the signs of the quality of matured church is that that church must be a Holy Spirit filled church. A Holy Spirit filled church. A Holy Spirit filled, uh, Spirit, uh, filled church means a church that is filled by the Holy Spirit. A church that has the qualities, a church that have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What is the evidence of to know if you are filled with the Holy Spirit? The evidence to know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit is this. It is attaining the all righteousness of God. The Bible says that repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that you may attain the righteousness of God. And so that you may receive the gift of right, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you must be baptized through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the name that gives life, the name that come to redeem us, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then be filled by the Holy Spirit and then produced the fruit of the Holy Spirit. A church that has the Holy Spirit is a church that is ha that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, we know them. Love, joy, uh, patience, endurance, endurance and uh, self-control, peace, all those kind of, of, of qualities. They are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You need to have joy you need to have patience. You need to have, to, to have uh, patience. You need to have self-control. You need to, to have joy in your life. You need to be peaceful. Not speaking with other people like you are uh, very angry. You need to be peaceful. You need to show self-control. When the problems come, when the trials are coming, you need to have self-control that, no, I will not sin. I know God. I will not look at this. I know God. I fear God. You must have self-control in your life that you cannot do Things that are against God because you have the self control to tell you no. From this point, I separate. I cannot do this. From this point, I cannot go there. I have self control. I control. The self control is the Holy Spirit within you who controls you. You see? That is the church that God is coming for. A church that has the fruits of the Holy Spirit love, joy, peace, uh, gentleness, and all those kind of humility, all those kind of fruits, they are part of the humility, they are part of the quality of the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the, and the endurance, patience, peace, joy, and the self-control, and all those kind of fruits of the Holy Spirit. You must, because the Bible says that you will know by them by their fruits. A tree is known by the fruits. A tree, a kind of is known by, so you must have, you must produce fruits of the Holy Spirit. So the church that God is coming for is a church that has the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When you, when you see them, they have the quality of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are humble, they are meek, they are peaceful, they are holy, they are righteous, they are peaceful. They have self-control, they are gentle, they are patience. You see? They are patient with the world. They are patient with Jesus. They walk with God. That is the quality of the church that I saw, a matured church to enter the kingdom of God. For if you do not have those fruits of the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You may enter the kingdom of God without the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gifts, but you cannot enter without you cannot enter without fruits. Fruits of the Holy Spirit are them that will make you to enter the kingdom of God, not gifts. You know, you may wonder. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 7, the book of Matthew 7, the Bible says where they are, that in that day may they will come to me saying, Jesus, did we not prophesy? Did we not heal? We did this and this. We healed, we cast demons in your name. But Jesus will tell them, I don't know, go away. I don't know you. Why? And he say, I don't know you. Go away, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Why? Because those people, they had the gift, you see. They had the gift. He is rejecting those who are healing in his name. Who are prophesying in his name, meaning they were people with the gift, but they will be rejected in, in the kingdom of God because they are uh, they were workers of iniquity, workers of sin, workers of darkness. They were working in evil way. So gift cannot make you to enter the kingdom of God. What will make it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, those quality, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, those quality, love, joy, all those kind of quality, peace, holiness, those things. They will make you to enter the kingdom of God. So maintain your fruits of the Holy Spirit. 
because those are the things that will be counted in the kingdom of God. So, we must, the church that want to enter the kingdom of God must have those characters of righteousness, those characters that that church is Holy Spirit filled, a church that is Holy Spirit filled. You remember, even in the time of the, or in the book of Matthew 25, about the foolish virgins and the wise virgins, them that were missed, them that did not see Jesus Christ, them that did not go with Jesus, they were foolish virgins. And what they lacked is they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. The oil in them, they did not have the oil of the Holy Spirit. So you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. A Christian want to enter the kingdom of God. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit in this hour. Not the Holy Spirit that people are receiving, the Holy Spirit, the false spirit, the demonic spirit that people are receiving, that uh, to be with the Holy Spirit it, it is to speak with the tongue, to say blah, 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 that when you come to the church of God, you want to show, to show us that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So you start uh, uh, speaking in, in false tongue, that is demonic tongue, that is demonic spirit in you. You need a deliverance in your life. You see, some of the people in the church, the 90% the of the people in the church, they need a reverence so that they may stop speaking in tongues because they are speaking in the tongues of the devil, the tongues of pretending like the so and so, so that they may uh, behave. And that is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You cannot joke with the Holy Spirit. You cannot blaspheme. You cannot copy the Holy Spirit. You cannot copy a gift like that. It is God who gives gifts. Don't force it to come out from you. If you force it, you need a deliverance and you need to be, to be delivered from that spirit of, of falsehood, falsehood and deception. That is a bad spirit that uh, abuses the Holy Spirit of God. So, to be filled by the Holy Spirit, it is to be filled and to produce those fruits of the Holy Spirit. That is why those wise virgins, they made it to the kingdom of God. Because they were filled, they maintained, they, they, they maintained the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They maintained that in the time of, of, of patience, they, it is the time of now being patient with the Lord, being patient with the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is coming, but they were being patient. They were being patient with Him. That is a sign that they had the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And also they have the self-control. Other bride, other five foolish virgins, they were still going, going and looking, looking, going and go. They were still going, 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 going. They didn't have the self control to manage their oil. So they go, they went even to, 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 to against the board. They went even against the, the word of God. That is how it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, a church that is spirit filled church that walks in the fear of God. Number five. Separation from the world. Number five, a sign. A sign number five, uh, separation from the world. The quality of a mature church. It's, it is separation from the world. A church that is very separated from the world. The way they walk, the way they dress, they don't dress the same dressing of the world. They dress very pure. They dress to glorify God. They, they are separated from the world. You must be separated from the world in this hour. You cannot just be watching the same, the, 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 the same programs of the world, the, the same movies of killing, 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 horrors, the same movies. You cannot, you must be separated in this hour because we cannot be teaching our children that killing is bad. Then you are going at that TV, at that program and you are still defending uh, the stars. They are killing, they are killing, you are still defending the war, the violence, uh, uh, actions, movie and all those kind of things and, uh, and, uh, and programs and uh, movies of, uh, of immorality and fornication and homosexuality and you are still defending those movies of fornication and adultery. You must be separate in this hour if you want to see the kingdom of God. That is the church that God is coming for. A church that is separated from the world, from whatever that does not please God. Separate yourself from that thing. If they are music, musics of the world, do not, do not listen to them. If they are not glorifying God, if they are not praising God, do not listen to them. That is how it means to be separate. That is to, to be separate, a separated from the a separated church from the world. Why? Because Jesus said that for those who want to for those who want to follow Jesus, they must deny themselves and forget the world. Forget themselves, forget the things of the world. They must separate themselves from the things of the world. You cannot and he said that no one who 
you know that the, the, a servant that is called but now but, but he's still looking behind looking behind that servant is not worthy to enter the kingdom of god because he has not separated himself from the world you must separate yourself from the world and don't look the things of the world again be separate from the friends of the world still walking with the same friend of the world still walking with the with those uh uh, the, 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 those drunk and a friend that you used to drink with them, you, st you are still walking with them and uh, you are not even preaching to them, but you are still walking to them, you are still listening to their jokes and to their fans and to their stories there and loving, loving, loving with the people of the world instead of preaching to them. If you are not preaching to them, therefore, you must separate yourself from the things of the because they will defile you. Everything that defies you in this hour, be separate from that thing. Everything that make you make you with the stain, make your garment to stain, stains your garment with the sin, with the corruption, with the lying, with the adulteries, with the rust, with the deception, with the wilderness, separate from that thing. Because Jesus, a church that knows, a church that is separated from the things of this world, that is a church that that is the kind of the church that I saw God Jesus Christ. He coming for a church that we separated from the things of the world. Why does God want us to separate himself, uh, ourselves from the world? Because the world and the things that are in them are not from God. And the Bible says those who love the world, they cannot love God. And those who want to see the kingdom of God, they must separate themselves from the things of the world. The way the world do, those things that they do that does, doesn't glorify God, separate them from your life. Because the world and the things that are there are, do not belong to God, but belong to the, to the evil one. And so, God wants us to separate ourselves from that things, from those things of the world. And this is why a church, the quality of the church, is that a separated church from the world, a church that is holy, a church that has a difference between the world and between the church of God. A church that has that difference, that is a, if, if, if she is a woman, she has a difference between a prostitute and between a woman. If she is a Deborah, she has a difference between Deborah and a, Je a Jezebel. There is a great difference between Deborah and Jezebel. And there is a great difference between Paul and Saul. And there is also a great difference between a Christian and a prostitute. The way they walk, the way they dress, the way they speak. There is a big difference between a preacher and an entertainer and a comedian. We must have a difference if we have God in our life. Because when God comes in our life, God brings a difference in our life. He separates us from the world. And when you read in the book of, of 2 Corinthians 6, the Bible says here that the Bible says here in the book of 14, the Bible says here in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, that is how, that is a calling. God calls his people to separate himself. And he said, don't, don't, do not be yoked together with the unbelievers for what do the righteous and the wicked have in common? Or what fellowship can the right have with the darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and, uh, and uh, 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 Christ and uh, burial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and the idols? For we are the temple of the Lord God, and God say, I will live with them, and I will, I will walk among them, and I, will, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Hallelujah. And so, 17 says well, that therefore come out from them and be ye separate, says the Lord. He say, touch not the un unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be your father to you, and you will be my son and my daughter, says the Lord. But he say, therefore come out from them and separate. See, therefore come out from them and be separate. So this is what God is saying. Come out from them and be separate. Don't touch what is unclean. Don't walk with those who are, un are not clean. Don't walk with those who are uh, the unbeliever. What fellowship do the right and the darkness have in common? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. What fellowship does it have? The temple of God and the temple of the burial. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? 
So your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You must be pure. You must be holy. The way you present your body. Stop of looking. Stop of making up your body with the makeups, with the, with the earrings, with the rings. Like it is your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, but your body looks like the body of a Hindu. Hindu, they worship the, those idols. So when they look at you, even your ears, your hanging rings, or rings, 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 like it's your body, uh, the temple of the idol, the temple of uh, Hinduism, the temple of Buddhist. Other painting themselves with the tattoos, painting, painting, bru uh, uh, painting, even the makeups and painting the the, the 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 mouth and whatever those things, the cosmetic thing. You must avoid them if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the body of God, the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So be separate with those things. Your body is not for yourself to commit those things and to to draw yourself those colors, those colors and those false hairs and all those things your body present your body holy pure righteous and truth pure brimless that is the body that is how you should be you should be brimless in this hour you should be holy and he say touch not and clean thing do not touch those things those makeups those things those rings those are things of the world don't touch them they will say don't touch them and he said, and I will receive you and I will, you will be my father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. The same way he, he, told, uh, he, told, uh, he told Moses to, to tell the children of Israel. He said that tell those children, tell them to remove all those ornaments. Because if they don't remove those ornaments, I will destroy it. I will destroy them. I will destroy them. He said that. God and the Bible says that when they had that, they mourned and they did not wear those ear, those rings again. The earrings, the the bracelet, the the, the jewelries, all those things, they did not wear them. They mourned because God was angry and He said that if you will not remove those things, I will destroy you. Otherwise, remove all those ornaments and all those things if you want to walk, walk with me. And the same way he told even Jacob when he was telling them, when he wanted to build an ark, when he wanted to build a temple of God, he told them, Jacob told them, remove, them, remove all those ornaments and they remove them and they bury them. Because God is saying that consecrate yourself, sanctify yourself and cleanse yourself and remove all those ornaments and those clothes. Those dirty clothes stained with the sexual sin, stained with the rusting, stained with the uh, uh, seduction and rusting spirit. They removed them and they built an, a, a temple of God which is holy and God accepted them. So also God is saying, therefore come out from them and be separate. Touch not and clean thing and I will receive you. I will be my, you will be my father and my daughter. You will be my, you, you will be a father to you. I will be a father to you and I will be my, you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. A separation is a must if you want to see the kingdom of God in this hour. Number six, puritiness. A church, the quality of the matured church, it is puritiness. That church must be pure. The way they walk, they must be pure. The way they behave, they must be pure. Puritiness, the church that is pure. Even in your heart, be pure. Even in your eyes, be pure. Even in your eyes, be pure. Your hands, be pure. Your legs, be pure. Don't go stepping, stepping those places. Don't go uh, stepping, stepping and touching, touching things. Like that. You must be pure. God says, don't touch the unclean thing and I accept you. Don't see the unclean programs and movies and I accept you. Don't listen to unclean, unclean music and, uh, and words and rumors and stories and I will accept you. Be pure in this hour. Be brimless in this hour. Number seven, Number seven, when I'm finishing, number seven, the quality of the matured church, the church that I saw Jesus Christ coming for. Number seven says, the wise virgin church. The wise virgin church, meaning that church must be a virgin church, a church that is wise. The, that, the first thing to note about the five, five, five foolish virgins and the, and the five wise virgins, their difference was not the, the, their difference, they were all virgins. They were all virgins, they were all women. And the, the, their difference was this, they were wise, they were foolish. So the quality of the mature church is that they must be a church that is wise, a wise church, a wise virgin church. Because many churches, many churches are foolish virgins. They are still virgins, yes. When you see them, they, are sti they still look like virgins, they still produce like virgins. But inside them, they are very foolish, inside them.
they are still very virgin they are uh, uh, their appearance i'm speaking about their appearance their outward appearance they are virgin they are holy they are brimless but inside them they are foolish so there is wise virgins and there is foolish virgins both are virgins but one virgin here is foolish and another virgin here is ho or is wise you see god is saying a church that has wisdom a church that has wisdom a church that has know the timeline of the bible know how to interpret the bible a church that has the revelation a, a church that has the understanding the the, the the fear of the lord is the beginning of the wisdom so that church has the fear of god that church has the understanding they understand the scripture they understand the word of god they practice the word of god the way they baptize they baptize through the word of god how the apostles were baptizing how jesus christ said to the apostles they were baptizing that way they are still baptizing that way the order of the church is that way how the bible says that a woman cannot stand in the church and uh, uh, and read the church and uh, preach and teach before men that one must be respected in the church of God. It must be like that, that a woman is not allowed to teach or preach in the church of God. A wise church that practices the word of God from the beginning to the end, from Revelation to Genesis, they practice the word of God. They must be people who have the wisdom, who have the wisdom of the word of God, how God was teaching them. How Jesus Christ was conducting the church, how the apostles, the prophet were conducting the church. The church of God must have wisdom in this hour and interpret the word of God the way it should be. And without adding the word of God or removing the word of God. The way it should be, let it be preached that way. The way it should be practiced, let it be practiced that way. That is the church that God is saying. A church that has the orders of the church. That a man, ha, a, a woman cannot take authority of a man. That even in your house, you women, you are not taking authority over your man. You are submitting to the authority. You are submitting, you are submitting and you are being read by man. Not that you woman, you are the one who is reading men. And speaking even from the church, speaking from the church to the, your house, you are still speaking and you are not allowing the men to speak. There must be a difference. A man ha, is the one to rule a woman, not a woman to rule a man. Not a woman to preach to a man, not a woman to read a man, not a woman to teach a man. But a man is the one who was given the authority to teach women and to read them. They have their own ministry, women. They can do, they can evangelize, they can do everything. They are outside. But when they come to the church, you must submit to the authority of the church and submit to the authority of God. Submit even to the will to the men, the readership who are reading in the church of God. Because there is an order in the church and that is why you see that even in heaven you hear about the 24 men, the 24 uh, wise men who are there in heaven who are worshipping God. In the altar, in there at the altar, there is no woman there. So the women should submit according to the word of God. That is the church that is called the wise virgin church that follows the word of God, that goes through the word of God, that goes the way the word of God says. They don't add and they don't uh, add or remove the word of God. They practice as it is. So that is the church that I saw Jesus Christ coming for because many will come to be rejected. Oh, I did this. Oh, I preach. Oh, I did. Were you obeying the word of God? Were you practicing according to the word of God? I didn't send you. I didn't appoint you to teach. I didn't appoint you to preach. Other will be told, you, care, you come with the signs and wonders, you come with the prophesying, you come. I say, I don't know you. Go away from me because you are not doing accordingly to the word of God. Go away, you workers of Satan, workers of iniquity, workers of sin, because you are not practicing the word of God the way it should be. So, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than serving the Lord. Obedience is better than going there and serving and worshipping God and preaching and teaching. Obeying the word of God, it is better that you will make it the kingdom of God. So, that is the quality of the matured church. That is the kind of the church 
that I saw Jesus Christ coming for, a church that is righteous, a church that is holy, a church that knows how to walk with God. And that is the church that God is saying, a perfect church. And the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, Since we have those promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates our body, spirit, and perfecting holiness out of our fear of God. See, that since we have those promises, dear friends, dear churches, dear pastors, dear Christians, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates our body and spirit and perfecting holiness out of reverence of God. Separate yourself from everything that is contaminating your body. The sermons, the preachings that are contaminating your soul, your spirit, separate from them. The ministry that are contaminating your spirit, separate from them. The children, the people, the, uh, the things, the fashion that are contaminating your body, the programs, the singing, the music, the movies, the TV programs, all those things that are contaminating your body, separate them, with, separate them, separate them for, your, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Separate them if you want to see the kingdom of God. And he said, perfecting holiness out of the fear of God. You must perfect holiness out of the fear of God, fearing God. Because the judgment of God is near. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is near. And He is coming to mature a church that is holy. To mature a church that walks with Him. To mature a church that walks in perfectness. So that is the quality of a matured church. And that is the church that I saw being raptured. The raptured church. A church that walks in righteousness, in holiness, far away from the world. A church that focused to for the kingdom of God, a church that hungers for the kingdom of God, a church that thirsty for the righteousness and holiness for the kingdom of God, not a church that is still is preaching the prosperity gospel, the messages of the of the world, the sowing a seed in the church, buying and selling in the churches, the church that is still uh, uh, grew with the with the love of the money, the love of the riches of this world. That kind of a church is not the church that God is coming for. Jesus Christ is coming for the church that is holy, a church that does not have the love of the world, but a church that has the love of the word of God, the church that has the love of the kingdom of God, the church that does not have the love of the kingdom of the world. That is the kind of a church that God is coming for. So, be perfect, be holy, because Jesus Christ is coming. And I have seen the great harvest time, Jesus Christ has been speaking about to, uh, to me many of the time, visions after vision, seeing the time of the harvest, 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 I have seen him coming to harvest, to harvest, but this round, this vision, he showed me the child that should be now raptured, a child that will be harvested, the matured, the perfect church, perfected by the word of God, washed through the word of God, that is the kind of the church. So. That is the message. May it be done in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bless your holy name. I say thank you because of the wisdom, knowledge, revelation of your word. Be glorified, O Holy Father. Perfect your people. Perfect your church. Make them mature through your word in the name of Jesus. Them that are still, O God, uh, walking and following the patterns of this world, I pray that you may separate them in the name of Jesus. Separate them for the kingdom of God. Mature them that they may see you, O Holy God. In the mightiest name of Jesus, we pray that, Father, we may be perfect and holy, that we may not miss the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray and believe. Amen. May the Lord bless you so much. And may you continue to seek God in this hour when he may be found. We are in the end times and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is surely coming. Amen.